G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy today, uh, continuing some trade talk. Uh, obviously the big story that's come out over the last 24 hours is young Jason Horn Francis requesting a trade to Port Adelaide once out of North Melbourne already. Uh, so today's video, I'm just going to cover mostly that. There were some deals that went down today, which we'll touch on in this video, but I kind of want to talk about Horn Francis as it stands because it's a fairly big story. Now this is an all-time stinker period for North Melbourne, obviously uh, Back-to-back -back wooden spoons they've won. Coming off a year where they've sacked their coach, they obviously signed Alistair Clarkson, which seemed like a win at the time, but he hasn't been able to join the club, and uh, who knows what's what's happening there. They're apparently without a CEO too, and then uh, now, to really put the icing on that shit cake, uh, their number one pick last year is requested to trade out of the club after just one year. The guy who's meant to be part of the solution for getting them out of this problem is now causing a massive headache for them. So I'll kind of break this little video down into sections and maybe start off and well, what do we think about the, the actual decision here by Jason Horn Francis. For me personally, I can't help but feel there's a bit of a bratty vibe to this. Now throughout the year, we did have you know reports of his bad attitude and you know reacting poorly to getting dropped and sort of acting like he wasn't being there. And for me personally, I was kind of holding off on the criticism on him because I had a feeling there was a bit of, you know, just a bit of innuendo, a bit of speculation that may not have actually been founded in truth. Although it's hard to really defend that now when he's come out and requested a trade, suddenly it's kind of legit legitimized all that talk. Now look, he's not the uh, the first kid who's requested a trade home to the play in their home state. He's not the first kid to get homesick, but I guess for me, requesting a trade one year after being the number one pick, personally, I don't think it's a great look and it's not a great reflection of his attitude if he's showing no loyalty to the club that's picked him up, invested the number one draft pick in him. Even with all the, the, the stuff that's happening at North Melbourne this year, obviously not a great list. Prospects don't look great, but it is only a moment in time and I feel like there should be a greater level of loyalty to North Melbourne rather than just bailing after one year because things are tough right now. Now obviously I don't know the personal circumstances here with Horn Francis. There could be more going on but it does appear just on face value that this is kind of just a case of preference. Now there are reports that he is very very homesick but he is while he's a kid in some sense he is still an adult who nominated to go into the AFL draft and was very, very aware that there was a good chance he was going to end up away from home. In fact, it was almost a certainty. Now, you could make the point that maybe he just didn't know how homesick he was going to get. But for me personally, I think there would need to be a fairly serious personal circumstance that would warrant bailing on your club after just one year. And I do think it is important that he is the number one draft pick. Other people may disagree on that point, but I do think there's a certain weight of expectation that comes with being the number one draft pick. And you're obviously a very, very important player to your club. And I guess others will say the expectation of his loyalty shouldn't be you know, greater on him than any other player taken in the draft at all. But I kind of disagree on that, probably just on a ethical standpoint. If you're the number one draft pick, you're an important asset to that club. And I, I think that weighs into it for my personal opinion. So long story short on that point, I just think in my opinion, it would require a pretty good reason to want to go home after one year at a football club. There is the other side of the coin where, you know, him requesting a trade now, he could be doing the right thing by North Melbourne for a couple of reasons. He's going to be contracted, which means North aren't obligated to trade him now like they would be next year. And as such, the, the value that he presents as a, as a trade asset is much higher this year than it will be next year, presumably. So in other words, North Melbourne could maximize their return into trade this year, whereas next year, if he doesn't have a great year on the field, he could go for a lot cheaper. Kane Corns came out and sort of empathized with Horn Francis, and it is worth noting he is a Port Adelaide man, so of course... He's not going to slaughter Horn Francis in the media, but he said, put yourself in Horn Francis' shoes. They've got no CEO, no recruiters. Their list is an absolute mess. And now this current uncertainty about the coach. And I suppose that is somewhat valid. But for me, I'm still a little bit disappointed that Horn Francis hasn't been keen to stick it out longer than one year. And I suppose that comes from a very fan-focused perspective where we as fans want to see players loyal to their club because if they're not and this sort of stuff happens on the regular, then it really does compromise the integrity of the draft system. Suddenly, if you're now North Melbourne, but obviously we know about Gold Coast and GWS, having early draft picks aren't the same sort of comfort that they would be you know, in eras gone by. Obviously, there's the risk that a kid doesn't turn out, but then there's also the added risk for some of these clubs with poor retention issues that the kid may come good and then just want to leave anyway. For me, I, I can't get over the fact of how, how bizarre it is how much homesickness seems to affect AFL players. You don't really see it in any other sport, like in the EPL or you know basketball, where players move all over the country all the time. Yes, there's a lot of player movement in those sports as well, but you know, unless I'm just 
uneducated and I don't recall too many cases of players just wanting to play in their home city again. Whereas in the AFL, it's there's a really realistic thing of, yes, this kid's the best player in the draft, but he might want to go home and play in front of his family. Like that is the this is the only sport, as far as I'm aware, where this is a legitimate issue. Anyway, I didn't start this video to rag on Horn Francis, but I think it is a worthwhile topic to discuss. Long story short, I think I would have respected Horn Francis' decision more if he had stuck it out for longer than one year. But that's just my opinion. We can get back to discussing how much of a blow this is for North Melbourne. Obviously, much has been discussed about, you know, the, the trade offers they rejected for the number one pick last year in order to get Horn Francis. The two notable deals were from Adelaide and Richmond, both of which they declined. So it's been doing the rounds in social media over the last 24 hours or so. But had they dealt with Adelaide last year, North Melbourne would potentially have Josh Rochelle on their list because they would have had the pick that Adelaide took to take Josh Rochelle, as well as picks five and 14 this year. And that could be, I don't know, a Jed Buzzlinger comes to mind because they need a key defender at pick five. And then, you know, whatever, best available midfielder at pick 14 as well. Had they dealt with Richmond, they could have had 7, 15, 26 and Callum Coleman Jones. Jones last year. Those picks became Josh Gibkiss, Tom Brown, and Tyler Sonzi. It's also worth noting they would have also kept pick 19 this year because that's what they ended up trading for Callum Coleman Jones. Now, I'm not actually saying that to, to rag on North Melbourne for declining the offer at, at the time. They thought they had their man, but it's also worth considering that those offers were on the table and it helps add some context as to how much this is blown up in North Melbourne's face. I'm sure with the benefit of hindsight, they'd love to have Rochelle and pick 5 and 14 this year, but that's the way football goes sometimes. Now, the next part of this discussion, I guess, would be, you know, how realistic is it that a deal actually gets done this year? And their list manager, Brady Rawlings, came out and made some comments on Horn Francis today. The comments I thought were somewhat interesting. Obviously, first stated it was no guarantee that a deal gets done, made it sound like he's going to work to the interests of North Melbourne. And there's a realistic chance that North Melbourne retain Horn Francis. But then he also said he's informed that Horn Francis has been incredibly homesick got a very tight family, feels the right place for him is in South Australia. He then says, we've got 10 days to work it through with both Adelaide clubs, so we'll see how it goes. So to me, the interesting part of that is there's been no sort of Fremantle-esque statement of no, he's not tradable. To me, that suggests that obviously they're going to go really hard at getting the maximum best offer they can for Horn Francis. They've really left the door open there for a deal to get done. So I'm actually thinking there's a good chance North take this really seriously and he could end up at Port Adelaide by the end of the trade period. And I guess the reason for that is reading between the lines, it feels like they're so resigned to the reality that they don't want Horn Francis there if he's going to have a bad attitude and genuinely doesn't want to be there. And of course, the consideration that in 12 months time, he's out of contract and they may have way less leverage as well. And Port Adelaide as well will feel a sense of pressure to try and get this deal done this year because in 12 months time, when Adelaide don't have an Isaac Rankin deal in front of them, there's a good chance that either club comes into play and he could play for either club. So what could Port Adelaide possibly offer? Uh, I think it's been reported that pick eight and a future first is what they've tabled. But I dare say this won't be enough, especially when you consider what offers North rejected for Horn Francis last year. It's also worth noting that pick eight this year is all well and good, but Port Adelaide's future first, there is a there's a large range where that could be because Port were obviously, you know, made two prelims in a row and then fell off a cliff in the first five rounds of this year. But I think there's a reasonable expectation that they could bounce back into finals this year. Now, you may disagree on that. You might think Port's cooked. But if you're North Melbourne, you've got to consider the possibility that Port Adelaide jump up the ladder, in which case that deal is a lot worse than it may seem right now. Rawlings also made a few comments about wanting to mature the North Melbourne list. And that's been quite obvious with uh, some of the names they've been linked to, some established talent around the league. We talked about it on this channel as well. So I do expect North Melbourne will be pushing for some sort of mature player as part of the deal. So perhaps it could be pick eight, a future first, and some sort of established talent at Port Adelaide. And it may be one that we don't expect. So in my opinion, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a surprise Port Adelaide player head to North Melbourne in order for Port Adelaide to facilitate this deal. Now, some of the names that come to mind, uh, obviously, Zach Butters and Xavier Dersmer are two of the best young Victorian talents on their list. Josh Sin was drafted in the first round last year, and then there's Miles Bergman as well, who's a pretty handy defender. Port Adelaide did come out and say that those players are not contemplating leaving, nor are Port Adelaide contemplating trading them. But you never know. I do remember Josh Kennedy didn't want to come to West Coast as well back in 2007. So that one's a wait and see. I do think someone could be shaken loose from Port Adelaide by the end of this trade period. And just to compound North's woes as well, there was another report on SEN, I think it was, that Taron Thomas is also considering requesting a trade out of the club. And that one will be interesting, although I just don't think North Melbourne are a chance to trade two contracted guns out of their list. 
let alone Horn Francis on its own, there's no way they'll also let Taron Thomas go. But regardless, it's cause for concern and an indictment on, you know, the, the mood at the club amongst the playing group at North Melbourne right now. But anyway, that is kind of my thoughts on the Horn Francis deal. I think it's uh, more likely to happen than not based on Rawlings' comments, but I'm just kind of wildly speculating here. I don't really have any clue. There were some other deals done today. We knew about Tim Taranto heading to the Tigers from GW West. That got done for pick 12 and 19, and that surprised me a little. As it stands, Richmond now hold pick 31 and 86 this year, and obviously their future picks intact as well. So they've also got to get a deal done for Hopper. A future first and, you know, pick 31 in this year's draft seems a bit light. So they're going to have to do some maneuvering. And again, that could shake loose someone like a Jack Graham who may join another club simply for Richmond to accommodate this deal. There's been a bit, little bit of talk, obviously, that he's open to a move. I'm pretty sure the Jack Graham to Port Adelaide rumor got quashed. I don't think that's going to happen. But you'd also have to consider from Graham's perspective, does he want midfield minutes? Taranto and Hopper joining the list. There's a few things to consider. There. We also saw Bobby Hill joined Collingwood uh, on day one as well. That was, it was a bit of a formality that got done for a future second and a three pick upgrade in the 40s this year. And then the Eagles signed the free agent in Jaden Hunt as well. And I talk a little bit about that in our most recent podcast, if you want to go check that out. Long story short, thought it was a strange move given, you know, where our list is heading to, to sign a player who's going to be 28 next year, but he's an Eagle now, so I'm going to embrace him. Anyway, guys, that is my thoughts. Let me know in the comments uh, what you agree with and disagree with in my video. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that disagree with my view on Horn Francis. And then I dare say there's going to be a fair few people who are equally disappointed that the number one draft pick from last year has requested a trade just 12 months after that draft. So thanks for watching. As always, guys, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.